Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the first little video of uh, 2019. Um, those that have been following the social media would have realised that um, we've been doing a huge amount of work here at Coron. Um, not uh, hundreds of things that you guys that have been before will will uh, sort of affect your fishing. Um, new stock ponds and uh, raising the swims and stuff so when we're full um, like we are in the spring that you're not uh, not paddling around. Um, taking all the jetties out, um, taking a load of snags out which gives you a lot more water and hopefully will keep the fish moving. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was with the start of the season six weeks away, um, I've just got the rods out um, for the afternoon. Um, now's the time where we start getting loads and loads of questions, absolutely fine, um, from the anglers that are due out this year. Um, about all sorts of things but there are several things that always come up and I must answer them a hundred times a year maybe more which isn't a problem it's, it's not a problem at all to, to want and crave some information um, but I thought if I did this little video I'll answer some of the key questions as well as a few things that I think are really important um, that maybe people don't pay a huge amount of attention to um, then, um, then it might help a few of you coming out not just here, but uh, anywhere. It doesn't have to be France, a carp's a carp. Um, successful tactics are successful tactics. Um, I don't claim to be Terry Hearn in any way, shape or form. Um, but uh, yeah, I've probably got a few insights that will help and, uh, and I spent a long time chatting with people over the, the course of the season. So let's start with um, what you should bring um, for here and majority of other French waters, especially the commercial type, similar to Coron um, and Laxolis and stuff. Basically, unless you are fishing um, what I would call a pasties runs water, you're fishing for singles and doubles, a match water basically, style, size of fish in the UK, um, then there's very little to change. Um, if you're fishing a, a typical uh, popular day ticket from Bray's Nose One or Oxley's to uh, to Farlow's um, or Bayswater, that's that sort of fish, that size of fish, the weed, the snags and things that you encounter in places like that, then you're already geared up um, for fishing here. So there's no need to go out and spend thousands of pounds on on this, that and everything. Obviously you want to be comfortable, but that's, that's slightly different. Um, but from a fishing point of view, um, yeah, if, you, if you're comfortable and confident and you're successful fishing that sort of water, um, then your equipment is already uh, up to scratch. Um, we have a, a rule about minimum breaking strain of £15 for your main line. Um, most of you will be using that um, breaking strain or, or slightly higher as diameters get lower um, anyway, but that's something to bear in mind. Um, so moving on to uh, bait and rigs. So there's, I've done a number of different videos on rigs, so I won't go into a huge amount of detail. Um, but there are three, maybe four rigs that I use anywhere, not just here. Um, for a low-lying pop-up, I love the multi-rig. Um, for uh, sort of bottom baits and things, it's the whole or wafter rig. I use that on bottom baits or, or wafters. Just I just move the uh, the tubing on the on the hook shank. There's a video. On the Atomic YouTube page I think I did on that but I can post the link to that um, and I use a stiff version depending on the bottom I'm fishing so I'll use fluorocarbon for that rig um, if it's rock hard like the number of the margin spots are or, um, or, or the normal 35 pound or 25 pound jelly wire and um, the Atomic jelly wire with the hauler hook so um, that's that hook size. I've always been a fan of bigger hooks. Um, I've always thought that if a fish can suss you out because you're using a four instead of a six or an eight, um, then uh, good on it because um, I really don't think it can sense that. If it can, maybe it costs you two, three bites a season. With the bigger hook, I'm more confident of landing them. So the, the toss up is, is an easy one for me. Um, so for me, I use, uh, with the haulers, I use a size two or a four. Sounds massive, but because it's a slightly longer shank, the gape isn't huge. Um, 
for everything else I use fours and fives. Um, I use atomic chodders in fives, um, I use claws, the atomic claws in a four or a six depending on the bait that I'm using. Um, so today for example I've got one out on a multi-rig, that's a size four claw um, with a 14mm pop-up and uh, I've got two out on um, wafter rigs basically. So I've got 12mm pop-ups um, on that hauler rig that I've mentioned with a big bunch of maggots because of the time of year. Um, so that's how I've set up with my three rods. Um, start of the season, bait wise, um, it's, it's the same all over the world as far as I'm concerned. Start of the season, they're, they're not so, it's like they've semi lost a bit of, uh, a bit of caution when it comes to colours. Um, and with them just waking up, I always like a bit of colour on the hook bait, um, certainly on two of the three. So my favourite colours on here are pink. I use the, uh, the Chi and Pepper um, Northern Baits pop-ups, the washed out pink, um, and orange, which I use the, the Coron Special Oranges, um, which are 15 mil, and I whittle them down or, um, or leave them as they are, depending on the, the situation. As the season gets on, certainly last year, um, quantity of bait stayed the same. They liked a lot. Um, I think our biggest, our most successful week last year, definitely the top two or three, um, I think they put 25k out on the first night. And it does take 24 hours normally for those big beds of bait to kick off, but they kept topping up. They, they harvested a couple of fish off the spot and then it kicked off. I think they had over 40 fish, if I'm... Uh, if my memory serves me correct. Um, so um, yeah, bait wise, uh, quantity, we do the bait pack. I've, I've set that bait pack up because I think on an average week, that should cover you um, with regard to your pellet, a bit of particle and um, a fair bit of, of the two house baits that we stock here. I always think it helps to, um, to have the two baits and mix them together, give you a couple of options, keeps the fish guessing a bit. Um, quantity wise as I say that pack is set up but we have bait here on site or certainly in my freezer at home we've got the new test bait from Northern Baits which is a shelf life there's no limit on that shelf life um, which is the only shelf life I don't limit but quantity wise that will always be in the shop throughout the season it's a fantastic bait really dark very very active in the water um, and um, it's what I've got on now um, it's what I've been feeding them as long with a load of Coron specials and the citrus fish uh, Giving them about 15 kilo a week not enough for them to you know be 55 pound plus for all of them by the time we get back uh, For the new season, but enough to keep them healthy and keep them grabbing around and looking for bait um, I, As again, I can always answer other questions on that pop-up colors again is a common one um, Always a fan of orange always a fan of purple um, we've got the MB5s here from Northern Baits, which are a dark purple. I use the little 10 millers uh, or 12 millers for my toppers if I'm fishing um, snowmen. Um, or um, we've got the 15 mils um, for, for pop-up fishing, for typical pop-up rigs. Um, I, I, orange, as I say, um, and then whites and, and yellows probably are the other two. Um, although yellow is probably my least favourite on here. I know a fair few of you have caught well on it. Um, but don't limit yourself. You know, you've, you've, most of you have got room in the car. I, I carry far too many pop-ups, but I'm always glad I do because when I'm scratching, I've got different options to uh, to turn to. Um, so that's that's uh, sort of bait rigs end tackle covered. Um, so let's move on to um, how I recommend fishing here and anywhere really. Um, it, all, it really does depend what you want from your holiday because it is a holiday at the end of the day. I used to go fishing to France, uh, really buzzing to fish, like hardcore fish. Um, I wouldn't rest much, I wasn't worried about the size of my bivy and everything else. I just wanted to hammer the fish. Um, that's not everyone's cup of tea. A lot of you don't get a chance to get out very much and when you do come here you want to chill, have a social, have a beer, be comfortable. I get that totally, um, which is why we've made all the swims bigger. Um, but come Tuesday or Wednesday that attitude if you're struggling or even blanking like the odd person will do um, by that stage of the week then people start scratching and that's when uh, things 
sort of go haywire really and it, it normally takes me to settle someone down to to get them back on track so f from my point of view the the biggest problem i see or the the thing that that, that people struggle with the most is although it's not a big lake there are there are loads of spots in each swim loads of little overhangs bushes little spots that look like they need a rod in them if you're going to rove the rods around and try all these spots don't overcommit with your bait um you know two or three handfuls of crush of half boilie a handful of whole boilie and a couple of handfuls of pellet that's fine it's not a problem because it won't be there long but if you pick three spots on saturday or sunday morning you put five or six kilo over each spot um and then keep topping it up like you will like most people have this routine they top up every lunch and a little bit before dinner or after dinner and they keep topping it up and then if it hasn't kicked off by monday or tuesday they're moving their three spots or at least a couple of them and they're doing it all over again so come thursday there's there's normally five or six spots within each swim that's got a shed load of bait on it and what i normally do if they're struggling at that point is ask where they started get the get the hook baits back on those spots and that normally does fish point being i'm not saying sit on a spot all week and then by friday if it hasn't gone off you're you're, you're then really scratching but don't overcommit. mess about a little bit if you want try different spots different rigs different hook baits but keep the bait little and often um, and then when you find a spot that you're happy with that's doing fish then you can start ramping the bait up um, as I say, it, it has worked in the past just to come down, fill it in, fish over the top of it, and it's worked, of course. But that won't work every week. Um, so it, you've only got a week. It sounds a long time, but everyone says time just disappears when you're down here. It's Wednesday afternoon, you're thinking, I've only had one, maybe two, it's, and my mate's had sort of nine or 10 at the top. So that, that would be my recommendation. Don't overcommit from the off um, unless you're confident you're going to sit on that specific spot. Um, until the bait's a little bit washed out, a little bit less um, uh, panicky for the fish, and then they will get on it. Um, so that's about rig positioning. Uh, the second point on that part of rig positioning is have a look at how you are fishing the spots. Obviously there are very obvious spots in each swim, um, and as a result they will see a line, normally bowstring tight or semi-slack, um, but m more more tight than slack um, is what I see on average each week um, coming out at an angle from each swim going to each spot these prime spots that are obvious so have a think about how you approach those spots having at the start of the season it might not be so important but as the season develops the fish wires up again the um, the line angles um, the way you're presenting your rigs on those specific spots matters big time so there is no rule that says you can't fish off the back bank um, I would rather if it was muggy and boggy you didn't set up over there um, without sort of having a chat with me first but definitely if you're seeing fish like most people do in and around the snags during the afternoons or first thing in the morning why not set the alarm for 4 5 o'clock the following morning get the rods go over just maybe a couple of rods pre-tie some bags, flick them out onto those spots that you've seen them on the following morning, the previous morning um, and uh, and fish for them under the rod tips rather than lines coming across um, you're, you're literally under your feet basically far less disturbance you're not trying to get those those special casts straight in under the trees you can literally dunk it out there and um, and that's been a winner for me a sort of development on that will be float fishing or free lining, um, stalking in general. Hardly anyone does it. Everyone keeps saying they're gonna do it at the start of the week, especially when they see my videos, which is what I love to do that. And with my sort of time constraints, it works for me. Um, bring a float rod or a spare rod. Um, two and a half pound is perfect. Um, that's what I use, or a, a scope or one of the tackle box rods that I use, the 10 footers bring a little box of floats and some shot and some size six or eight hooks um, pick up some some uh, sliced bread um, from the um, from the supermarket on your way down and and get on your toes and um, yeah go and go and find some spots again you'll see them over there at certain times you might even have a rig under them and it's not going off 
wander around the reel in, wander around there with the float rod, and try try some slow sinking bread flake in different spots that you've noticed fish, um, different depths off the bottom and things like that. The top of the channel, prime example, the amount of fish that get up there, especially in the weed, and hardly anyone goes up there and gives it a proper go. We've got the bridges onto the islands now, um, so you can walk out onto the island and fish, be right in amongst where a lot of them sit in the big weed bed up there. Um, Mark, when he was here with, uh, with John, bless him, um, and Ryan, Mark spent, I think Mark probably had more fish float fishing up the channel than he did in the left hand double, uh, you know, for the amount of time he spent doing each. Um, they're not always the biggest fish, um, but they can be. I mean, I've had, uh, I've had one of the 50s and two good 40s from up there. Um, stalking just on the bottom with uh, just a bag and no lead and I've had um, another 40 from uh, from the back there opposite the channel swim on uh, on floating crust um, so getting about and, and resting your swim for a start and, and having a little wonder is important um, and it will definitely if it puts you an extra fish on the bank every couple of days and you add that to your total from here you'll go away with a, with a good week more, more often than not um, another way of looking at it, something I put on the page that was popular, is, um, is fishing the, uh, the washing line technique, um, which is a, a, a little bit fiddly, a little bit time consuming, but once you've done it and you're prepared to go around there and do it, um, it'd be a bit different if it was a runs water and you're having five, six fish a day having to keep going around, but this isn't that sort of water. Um, so um, have a look on the page, scroll down, Carpology, I shared a little article Carpology did. Um, it basically means that you're keeping all your line out the water and you're achieving what I recommended about going round and dropping it below your feet. You're achieving that whilst having your rods in the same position in your swim. As, as fewer lines in the water as, as possible um, is always going to put the fish um, at ease or, or make them less stressed and aware that you're here. Um, on that note, they are aware you're here. These fish 100% know when they're being fished for. Um, if there's only two of you and you both go in in swim side by side and two thirds of the lake is empty you must be prepared to realize that the vast bulk of fish will move off you and because it's a long lake it's not like you can just whack it long and get to them you can't you'd have to move swim so I understand people want a social that's fine but be prepared then to spend the day uh, in the double if you're both in Lotties and Rolos for example um, otherwise you, you will struggle um, they're not going to sit in front of you knowing that you're there with you chatting away, the radio, car doors slamming, um, typical sort of noises that you make when it's dead quiet up here, there's loads of naturals up here um, and there's no one, you know, there's no one pressuring them. So you, that's really important that you bear that in mind. Um, I want you to catch at the end of the day, I want you to have a great holiday and I want you to catch. Um, so it's, sometimes it's about finding the fine line between, uh, between both.